live. Hello, SC2 Mistakes Friends. I am Furious Geo. And, and I am Agamemnon. I was going to say to my right, oh. but uh, you really bullied yourself in there. <laughs> to my right is Agamemnon, and on the line with us is TT1. Hello, guys. What's up? Thanks for doing this, TT1. Yeah, really, thanks really very glad much. You came no problem, on. man. No problem. And everybody can follow uh, TT1 on Twitter. Are you on Twitter a lot? Uh, yeah, I'm actually, I've been tweeting quite a bit in these past few months. They can follow awesome. me at IamTT1 if they want. Yep. And uh, check out your team also at www.root.gaming.com, correct? Indeed, yeah. Fantastic. All right, so uh, why don't we get into some questions? Um, is that okay with you? Sure, that's fine. All right, great. So um, first of all, uh, we know that you, you used to play uh, Brood War and you um, made quite a name with yourself doing that. Um, but with regards to SC2, um, kind of how, how's your career been so far and are there any highlights, any accomplishments that you're, you're really proud of and that you'd like people to know about? Well, yeah, I started playing StarCraft II uh, midway through the beta or maybe three-fourths into the beta. Um, I think my first, well, I was playing a lot during the first year of MLG and it was only foreigners, it was only Americans and I was doing really well in those tournaments. I, I think I got top eight every time yeah and then in the finals i got a uh, second place to general yeah that was awesome yeah that was my first year of competitive gaming in sc2 and after that wow. we went to, yeah we went to korea and i uh, played in uh, the korean championships and after that like i don't know what happened uh, <laughs> i started losing <laughs> i started losing a bit of motivation uh I, mm. I stopped practicing as much as i used to yeah i don't know if it's if it had to do with the koreans coming over and i lost motivation to practice because right. it felt like an uh, uphill battle to be honest wow. with all the koreans coming over yeah. and then you know like the quality of practice that they get compared to our quality of practice it's not comparable so yeah. i don't know i think that kind of mentally hurt me a bit and even now, I'm kind of like uh, I kind of struggle to motivate myself to practice. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm, I'm doing a bit better these days. I've been practicing a bit more, and recently I did pretty okay at the last WCS tournament. Yeah, yeah so, definitely. So speaking about that, why don't we uh, why don't we talk a bit about the WCS uh, Canada Finals? Uh, you placed uh, fourth, I think it was. Um, was you lost to Doro? Is that correct? I lost to DD in the winner's bracket, and yeah. then I lost to Ostoji in the loser's bracket. Oh, okay, right, perfect. So um, how did you kind of feel you, you did during that um, the WCS Canada Finals? Did you Were you happy with your play? Uh, was there anything you would have liked to, to do differently? Well, I kind of, I don't know, I went into into that tournament with uh, with no pressure at all because I wasn't practicing at all. Like, the the whole week before that, I didn't practice. So I went into wow. it with a different mind, mindset. Yeah. So I didn't feel any pressure. I didn't feel like, I didn't put any high expectations on myself. So I kind of played more relaxed. Yeah, and I felt like my mechanics uh, they weren't like as good as they should have been, but I felt like because I was you know calm, I didn't get overly nervous, so I played overall a bit better than I usually do in lands. So do you do you find that nerves are generally something that holds you back in in your gameplay? Um, I, when I was a, when like during the first year when I was going to all the MLGs and stuff, no, but it's been like a year of like. For the past year, I haven't been to a lot of lands. Right. So, like, whenever I go to lands now, like, it feels a bit weird. It's like a feels like a big deal. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> it's as if I'm restarting to play. It's like as if I'm uh, playing lands again. Wow. So it's kind of hard to adapt to it. So I remember, like, uh, when I went to IPL, it felt really weird, and like I played terribly, and I was really nervous. So oh. yeah. So this time around, I just wanted to like you know. Uh, go into it with a bit less ex expectations just so I, I wouldn't get as nervous as I did when I was at IPL. Okay, great. So also want to just congratulate you. We know you've uh, qualified for the North American Finals. Um, mm -hmm. What what are your hopes and expectations for that? Again, I'm going into it uh, with no expectations <laughs> at all. This is this is like the new approach that I'm, that I'm trying to focus on. Like Excellent. Stefano, when he plays a match, when he plays a tournament, Stefano, he has the same attitude. He doesn't care yeah. about, you know, how he's going to finish. Honestly, I just want to... I just want to take it one game at a time, one series at a time, and hope for the best. Uh, I'm maybe like one, two weeks before the tournament, I'm gonna start practicing a lot. Like right now, uh, ever since WCS, I haven't practiced at all. Oh. I've just been playing the what's it called, the Hots UMS oh, on yeah. SC2. Yeah. I've just been playing that, and one, two weeks before uh, WCS NA, um, I'm gonna start practicing so I can get my mechanics back. But honestly, like. 
I wasn't even I wasn't even, I I wasn't even sure that I was going to qualify for this tournament. And honestly, like I don't really care about the WCSNA <laughs> tournament all that much. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm yeah. just I'm just you know I'm just doing it for root, so they can get a bit more exposure. Right. And I'm just I'm mostly focusing on Heart of the Storm right now. Okay. So right. I, yeah. yeah. After that tournament, I'll see how I do, and I'll see like if I start becoming more hungry again so I, and I feel like I do and I start practicing a lot more then I'll be making more land appearances but as of now my plans are to focus 100% on Heart of the Swarm cool. after WCSNA yeah, yeah. so you mentioned Root um, <laughs> do you do you feel that joining Root has helped your gameplay at all have you been enjoying being part of Root the Root team yeah well it's well by gameplay like we haven't practiced much because I'm kind of emo and shit so <laughs> <laughs> we don't <laughs> We don't like, yeah. I don't practice as much yeah. as I used to, so we've. But I've been having fun with them. We've been talking on Skype. Uh, I think we have this uh, King of the Hill tournament that we're gonna do tomorrow, oh, and we cool. had one last week as well. So you know, we're doing a lot of team activity things. It's good for team bonding, and you know, it's been a lot of fun. Hopefully, when Heart of the Storm comes around, uh, Kiwi's gonna come back. So I'll have my partner, and I could start making up some new builds and stuff with Kiwi. So uh, we Very can start cool. doing well at lands again. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. So um, also, TT1, when we were at the uh, NASL a couple weeks ago, or a week and a half ago, um, we got to watch you on the WCS uh, main stage there. Mm -hmm. um, watching some of the, like, the way you use your keyboard, some of the keyboard mechanics, we were kind of hoping to pick your brain for lower level players. Mm -hmm. um, we noticed that, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but your left hand basically stays on the left side of the keyboard at all times. Is that pretty much correct? Um. Yeah, pretty much. I I never like paid attention to it, but I guess my pinky stays on the CTRL key. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, my th my thumb stays on the spacebar, and then all four of my uh all well the three middle fingers they're on the keys. Right. That on the hotkeys. That's okay. how I place my fingers. And um, what with regards to control groups um. I, I I don't know like we did like I, I don't know if I mentioned we did a video actually based on your gameplay I kind of tried to copy you <laughs> so um, that's cute <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. what I told him too I thought that's very cute <laughs> yeah. so what what I was doing before um, was I would use all the hockey oh, sorry all the control groups one all the way through ten right yeah and um, I just kind of found it a lot to manage you know doing all the assignments and then just well, keep keeping it all together it seemed like it's too much for one hand i don't know if that makes sense to you well ideally you'd want to use all the hotkeys if if it's in as I, I guess like as if you start practicing a lot more you'll get used to it yeah like i know a lot of korean players they use one to zero and in boudoir i was using one to zero as well yeah because you know because of we had like 12 uh 12 yeah. units for upgrade so we had to yeah. use all our hotkeys yeah you just but didn't in, put them all on one hockey yeah exactly that option. but in sc2 like uh, I find that three u three hotkeys uh, for units maximum. I guess that's yep. that's fine. Yeah. I usually put my um, gate units on one. Then say like if I have sentries, stalkers, and zealots, and on one, I always put the my blink stalkers on two. So I could just select two. My blink stalkers oh, okay. come up, and I, then I just blink them right away. Yeah. And say like I have another spellcaster, like high templars or a mothership. I yep. put those on three. Okay. When so you're mothership rushing, right? Yeah, if I if I yeah, if I'm under suppression, yeah. But uh, usually, like uh, the spellcasters, I try to keep them on the separate hotkeys. Right. But even sometimes I get lazy and I just like I put them on CTRL one <laughs> with my <laughs> my stalkers and stuff. But ideally, like like I know Hero, he has a lot of hotkeys, and that's something that I uh, actually I've been trying to imitate from him. Right. I've been cop trying to copy from him. Especially especially in Heart of a Storm, there's new there's new units. Right. There's like the mothership core too as well. So yeah. ideally I want to have that hotkey on a different uh, hotkey. Yep. But yeah, like my gate units are usually one to three and then four, five, six, seven, all my hot all the rest of my hotkeys I individually hotkey nexuses. Oh okay. Oh, okay. oh really? Yeah. Okay. So you don't you don't use the uh, backspace key to jump between nexus? No, I don't do that. Okay, okay. So, like, uh, say I have four nexuses, it's basically five, si uh, four, five, six, seven, like, un until zero. Oh, wow, wow. Right? So, yeah, nexus is only. And, you know, like, Koreans, they don't do this. They yeah. just stack them up, and they use F keys. So, like, say, like, they, they F key each base. So, like, if there's a drop, they just F key, and they go back to their base. But me, yeah. my reference point, like, if there's a drop, say, on my main base, I go 3-3, three, three, 
and then I'm back at my base. If it's, there's a drop on my expo, I go four four and I'm at my expo. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, yeah. and so and like I hot, I chrono boost everything separately as well. So I've just gotten used to it. I don't know if it's as efficient. Probably not. Than having all your nexuses stacked into one hotkey, but yeah. it's just something that I'm I've gotten used to. Well, it's more efficient than what I do. So. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you, do you make use of the tab key? Like for example, um. Some some people would put yeah. multiple buildings, multiple units on one uh, one key group, and then just tab through. Yeah, um, I I actually tried to test that out before. Like I would have my uh, say I have sentries and stalkers in one hotkey, and then I just tab just to get to my stalkers. Mm -hmm. so I could blink. I used to do that, but apart from that, no, I have it. And I was actually thinking about putting my nine hotkey to my tab because I put my, oh. my my zero. I switched it to my Q. Okay. And for Heart of the Swarm, actually, I'm going to put my Mothership Core on my Q. So, like, mm -hmm. it's much more easier to handle and manage. Yeah. And I was thinking about putting my 9 to my tab, but I'm still not sure about that. Now, do you use uh, Grid or do you have the standard layout? Uh, I use the Grid. Use Grid? Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so I think that's all. Uh, I don't know if... The, did you have any other suggestions for uh, gameplay mechanics that you'd like people to know? Uh, just try to keep your APM up. Like, when I... When I used to play Brood War, I was like 160 APM, 180 APM, but now in StarCraft 2, I'm like 300 APM. Wow. Just always, yeah, try to just watch your, you know, play your game. I don't know if there's any programs that allow you to see your APM as when you're playing. Are there? There's um, there's a game, there's a program called SC2 Gears. Are you familiar with that? Yeah, I am. But that's not during gameplay. Uh, the, it does have an oh, APM. It? it has, I, I'm not, I haven't tried it yet, but it has an APM, uh, like, alert function or something mm. like that yeah because I, mean, I don't really know about that though i remember in booter we asked we used to have that tool like you could see our ap did they, they show your apm like on the top left screen yeah. so it's always like you know it's always good to have that reminder like if you're playing a bit sloppy you'll see your apm drop down right. it's always like a good into like um how would i say it's it's a good like uh it's a good benchmark for you yeah exactly yeah. to like keep your apm up and you know it's always and you can like Say you're playing a bit slower than usual, you could just keep an eye on your APM and try to like yeah. bring it up during the game. That goes in kind of nicely with my next question. I just want to remind everybody to follow TT1 at, at I am TT1 and again www.root-gaming.com. Mm -hmm. But with the APM, what we find talking to players is um, spam is a big thing. Everybody says, mm -hmm. oh, you're spamming. You're Especially spamming. on the forums. You're spamming, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's all everybody talks about. What is your opinion on what players would refer to as spam? Spamming is basically, and I spam a lot in the early game. Like, say uh, you're starting the game and you have like 300 APM. So you're just going 1 3, 1 3, 1 3. Yeah. Like, say you have your probe and your Nexus hotkey. Your probe is 1, your Nexus is 3. Then you just go 1 3, 1 3, 1 3. And then you're, that's like spamming. Yeah. yeah. So we consider that spamming. But it's impossible to spam in the late game because you have so much stuff going on. Yeah. So usually, like in your early early game, you're spamming a lot, and it's it's like it's but something. Would you say spamming's not bad, right? Because are you getting your mindset no, in the game? Exactly. You're yeah. just warming up your fingers. Like yeah. everyone plays differently. Like I know Mers, he spams a lot as well in the early game. It's yeah. just something that we're used to. Like me and Mers, I think we spam the most in the early game. He has high APM as well. So like basically, when I'm spamming in the in the early game, I'm just warming up my fingers. Just yeah. so I could, you know, like, exactly, just warming up my fingers. And then all throughout the game, like, if you if you can't maintain your APM, then there's something wrong. You should probably be focusing on right. your multitasking and stuff a bit more. But say, like, I usually start the game off and I'm at, like, 400 APM because I'm spamming. But then my APM drops down to, like, 300, 250, yeah. 300 mid-game. And I maintain it at 250, 300. Yeah, if you're dropping from 400 to 20. To, like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> to like 400 to, like, 100 or 80. Yeah. Yeah. Then, yeah. And I'm talking about EPM. I'm not talking about right. APM. Yeah. Yeah. APM is the, the one Blizzard has. But, yeah, yeah. like, always you try, you try to have it, like, I would suggest trying to have your APM at 200 and above. Just so you can have good multitasking and everything. Like, lower than that, I... I don't know if uh, you could be a very good competitive gamer in the long run. Right. Obviously, like you can win a game here and there, but if you want to be like a really, really, really good player, like say Hero or you MC, should be then... able to get a bronze with that. I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, TT1. On another question: um, watching your gameplay, um, specifically, I don't know if you, I'm sure you might remember it. There was a game you played against July Zerg. Mm -hmm. um, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, when I was in Korea, it was on. Uh, Zalag, I think. Yeah, I think so. And it was like, 
watching that was amazing. You obviously had the mentality that you were not going to quit. Mm -hmm. I think there were times in, in, or there are times in your games when it looks like other people would have just said, no, 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 this game is over and quit uh, with GG. But you seem to have the mentality that you like to, you like to keep fighting uh, right through. Is that because you have the, um, the tenacity or do you just know that you can get out of that situation? Well, and we were like um, the Korean culture, like we were always big Korean fanboys, all the foreign players. Right. And the Korean players, they would always like fight until their last probe died. Yeah. So, because you never know what's going to happen in the game. So, I, I kind of got that from that. Like, I try to always stay in the game until, uh, until my last probe is dead or until I know I'm dead for sure. But actually, like, um, in the past few weeks, like, I've been GGing a bit early, a bit like too fast. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of a bad thing. Like, there's you have nothing to lose by GGing late. You know, it's right. just like yeah. it's just an extra like what five, ten, twenty minutes if you're gonna lose. And uh, it's always good to like you know stay in the game, try to like figure out how your opponent plays, his tendencies and stuff like that. So there's ne there's nothing like you ever lose by staying in the game a bit more. So yeah, I would uh, I would suggest all players to uh, you know GG as late as they can instead of early GGs. Yeah, and that's a that's a great suggestion. You know, I think that's one of the reasons why you're one of the more entertaining uh, players to watch because your games do tend to be epic. <laughs> uh, you know, because well, it, again, like it, like you said, you know, if someone had GG'd earlier, then the game just stops. But yeah, uh, you get to really explore the game and see what could happen. Especially like, but in S in SE2, it's much harder to do comebacks because of how the like unit AI works and how everything else works. Like in SE SE1 Brood War, we could. We could play defensive, and then because of like how the unit AI works, it, all the units would clump up. We could yeah. like get into a good position, or we could micro our units well, and we could like end up coming back into a game. But in SC2, like that's why I said like you have to have at least 200 or more APM. In right. SC2, the only way I could like see a come like see a player coming back is through multitasking and harassing his opponent, trying to delay his attacks yeah. until he got to like a certain position in the game where he was like convinced that he could defend that like huge attack that's going to end up killing him and then after that that's when the comeback is possible but to, uh, in order to be able to do that you need to have good APM high APM right. so you could harass your opponent like by time until you have like a perfect de defense setup and then when you defend that attack then like that's your cue for the comeback and use the mothership at that point right yeah use the mothership <laughs> at that point <laughs> or win behind dark shrine yeah, well, Dark Shrine, I, I'm I'm not a big uh, prof I'm not a big fan of the Dark Shrine DT. No. So I feel <laughs> like good. when you're behind any DT, you even get even further behind. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's such a it's such a big investment. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna get into some rapid fire here, TT1. So okay. I want you to answer these as quickly as you possibly can. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. So number one, what is your favorite game other than SC2? And I'm also gonna put in Brood War in there too. You can't say Brood. <laughs> All War. right. Final Fantasy VII. Oh, that's a good game. Yep. Yeah. Good answer. Okay. Good. What is it about Protoss that you like? Uh, it's an A-move race. Okay. And what do you dislike? <laughs> uh, it's an A-move race. <laughs> 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 um, are you looking f forward to Heart of the Swarm? Oh, yeah, yeah. I am. And is there what's the one thing that you're really looking forward to in that? Oracle. Oh. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Okay. Well, we look forward to seeing that. <laughs> what is your favorite unit... Uh, other than anything in the Protoss race? Uh, infestors, probably. Yeah. They are awesome. Yeah. <laughs> did, did you get to see Scarlet using those with the Ultralisks? Yeah, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I was told you. Yeah, yeah that, was that was pretty was awesome. Incredible. Mm. Um, what unit do you hate? Infestors. <laughs> infestors and Mutalisks. And mutalisks, yeah. yeah. Mutalisks. Love hate. <laughs> Love hate yeah. relationship. Um, Two more. If you had five chances to make a three-point shot, how many would you make? Zero. Zero? Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. And will you play 2v2 with me? Sure. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Master, here I come. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it for the rapid That's fire? That's it for rapid fire. Okay, great. We boom, just, boom, boom. We just got uh, one more question for you, TT1. Yeah. Um, looking forward into the future, um... I know you were saying you're not really too excited about the North American Finals. Um, what are you kind of looking forward to? What are you hoping to uh, do well in? Um, kind of what do you see for yourself in the future with SC2? 
Um, well, for Wings of Liberty, hopefully, like, after WCSNA, I start practicing a bit more. Because I'm actually waiting on my computer, and then I have my computer right now. Because I'm, I'm not streaming a lot, because I'm playing on my old computer right now. Yeah, yeah. So once I have my new computer set up, I'm going to start streaming a bit more. And streaming is always good to, like, for, is, is a good motivation to practice. Yeah. So hopefully when I have that running, I'm going to start streaming a lot more, and I'm going to start practicing a bit more. So hopefully I'll, um, I'll finish out Wings of Liberty with a good tournament result yeah. hopefully win one tournament or something like that or finish well at one tournament so that's my goal and then once heart of storm comes out like i'm gonna go all out on heart of storm like awesome. i'm ex expecting at least a first first finish in like the first year oh that's, awesome. that's what oh, i'm aiming I can't for, wait for that, then. so um just before we conclude uh with regards to heart of the swarm are you kind of ex expecting the esports community as a whole to make a quick switch to Heart of the Swarm, or do you think there will be some people kind of hanging on to Wings of Liberty? Um, I guess the pro gamers are going to be practicing. The pro gamers on big teams like EG or Liquid, the foreigners on those teams, they're going to be playing um, Wings of Liberty. But I think like other teams like Root, we're probably going to be focusing on uh, the beta a lot more than, say, yeah, those yeah. teams. Yeah. So I think start. once yeah, once we switch over, I think we're going to... We're gonna be ahead of the game. We're gonna have like cool. a lot of stuff that they won't be prepared for. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully that's gonna happen. And yeah, I, you know, honestly, I just I'm just uh, waiting for I'm just waiting for Harvest from Second start practicing yeah. a lot. Great. Well, we look forward to uh, to watching you in the future and seeing uh, how you can take Canada to high new levels in yeah. SC2. Yeah, I hope so. All right. So um, I guess that's it for the interview. We'd like to give thanks. First of all, to TT1 for showing up. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> we really appreciate that. Uh, again, no problem, like to, guys. Thanks. We'd like to also remind everybody who's watching, uh, follow TT1. He's very active on Twitter. His uh, ha handle there is at IMTT1. And also go check out the Root Gaming website. It's www.root-gaming.com. They've got a lot of really cool features. Um, they've got videos. They've got a very active forum. And even the borough. Uh, yeah, the borough is awesome. Oh, yeah. yeah, do you want to do you want to tell us a little bit about the borough? It's something that's uh, kind of different. It's just it's, yeah, it is. It's actually a really good idea. I think Cats came up with it. It's just like a general chat where you could just you know it's like a what's it called Quick Life Chat, but it's yeah. on it's on the root side. It's like a general chat where you can discuss about games. It's always fun to like have a big event or something, and then you could just like get on the root side and talk with other people about the game live. So yeah. it's a good thing to have, I think. And um, do do many of the uh, root teammates are they off and on or in the borough I should say? Uh, when we do events like we did the uh, King of the Hill, we're oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah we're active on the borough. So whenever we have like big events that we're doing, we're always on the borough. Cool, excellent. Okay, once again, uh, TT One, we'd like to say thanks from SC Two Mistakes. And, yeah. And uh, I'm Agamemnon signing off. I'm Furious Geo. See you later. See you guys. Bye.